Here's a question. Do you care who builds your roads or your bridges? Does it matter to you who built your rubbish dumps? Or for that matter, your trains or your railways? Wherever you live in the world, all these things are crucial to our lives. But as long as they work safely, they don't cost too much, and there's no corruption involved, it probably doesn't feel like it really matters who builds them. But what about our communication networks? Well, they could be a different matter. Next generation, super fast 5G networks are being rolled out all over the world. You might not have noticed. In Monaco, they're hiding some of the gear away in creative ways. But 5G is being touted as a breakthrough. Today, we're bringing 5G to iPhone. Both Apple and Google have jumped on it with their latest new phones. But experts say 5G goes far deeper, opening up whole new applications in areas from advanced medicine to manufacturing. 5G has the potential to really trigger a new wave of industrialization because it will be the foundation for data transmission and in industry 4.0, so industrial production, but also for applications like autonomous driving. It all means that 5G will be much more embedded in our societies than anything that went before, which means that we really need to trust it. And that's the dilemma facing countries everywhere right now. Can they trust the current leader in 5G technology, Huawei, a company from China? America says the answer is clearly no. Donald Trump has pulled the plug on Huawei having any involvement in US 5G networks, and his Secretary of State has been telling American allies in Europe that they must do the same. As a matter of Chinese law, the Chinese government can rightfully demand access to data flowing through Huawei and ZTE systems. Why would anyone grant such power to a regime that has already grossly violated cyberspace? And that tough line is not expected to change under incoming President Joe Biden. Some might see an irony in America's warnings. Its own track record here is hardly spotless. The Snowden leaks in 2013 showed that its NSA had used so-called backdoor vulnerabilities in US-made network equipment to tap into vast amounts of internet traffic. Could Chinese intelligence do the same with Huawei gear? There's a big concern that the company itself might build in vulnerabilities into the code that cannot be discovered very easily. And these vulnerabilities seem accidental or might seem accidental, but in fact they might be there on purpose or even if they are accidental and they find them afterwards, the company could exploit them. Um, the company not because of its own interest, but because it might be forced by the Chinese government to do so. Underpinning that concern is the fact that, as a Chinese company, Huawei is ultimately subject to the authority of China's ruling Communist Party, or CCP. Huawei insists that there are no back doors in its equipment and that it has no notable ties with the Chinese government. We spoke to its chief representative here in Berlin. Uh, Huawei has no special relations with any government compared to any other private uh, companies uh, across the world with their governments. And uh, but that is the fact. But Huawei's founder, Ren Zhengfei, has personally been a member of the Communist Party since the 1970s. And experts say the party's power over all Chinese firms is enshrined in law. The national intelligence law itself, uh, in Article 7, says that uh, all Chinese people and organizations, including companies, um, must support, assist and cooperate with national intelligence gathering. Now, the same law also says that people and organizations in China must maintain secrecy over this requirement and over these activities. So therefore, if you like, not only are people and companies in China obligated to assist in national intelligence gathering, but they're also obligated to deny in public that they are doing so. This degree of state power over Chinese companies is what creates the greatest anxiety in European capitals. 
especially in the light of China's increasingly authoritarian behavior. China has shocked the world with its crackdown on freedoms in Hong Kong, and it's rolling out a massive surveillance apparatus to monitor its entire population, both online and offline. The argument goes that if that's how China treats its own people, how much can it care about people in other parts of the world? About their rights to privacy, for example, or free speech? Or about the national security of the countries that they live in? The new US measures. As these questions grow more insistent, some European countries have changed their minds about Huawei. This summer, Britain said it was freezing the company out. France and Sweden have made similar moves. Here in Germany, the government has been trying to make up its mind. It's not like there's no alternative. The Nordic duo of Ericsson and Nokia are waiting in the wings with their own 5G technology right here in Europe. But Angela Merkel's own team has been divided, with the economy minister representing business in favor of Huawei and the foreign minister who's worried about geopolitics against. Even the security services have been sending contradictory signals. The head of Germany's foreign intelligence, the BND, has warned against Huawei, while the BSI, which is the body responsible for tech security, has suggested it can manage the risks. Meanwhile, some of Germany's big networks like Deutsche Telekom have already started installing Huawei's 5G equipment. They say that ripping it all out again would cost huge amounts of money, all adding to the pressure for a clear decision from the top. Ultimately, Angela Merkel in her office back there is going to have to come down on one side or the other. Huawei's critics, like the Liberal Free Democrat Party, say that she must err on the side of caution. Well, we cannot be sure that um, our data, our information that is transferred through 5G is secure and um, is not maybe used by uh, CCP for other reasons. And as long as we cannot rule that out, I would rule out Huawei from this um, build-up. It all comes back down to that crucial question that we began with, of trust. You need to view digital technologies, the coming 5G, the Internet of Things, surveillance issues. We need to view them through the prism of democratic security. Now, that will mean national security in some ways, but it basically means political security and that you need to support the values of democracy, of, of, of the separation of powers, of the rule of law within these systems and ensure that they follow what are, at the end of the day, values that are very, very important here in Germany and in Europe. And um, I think that given the realities, the political and the economic realities in China, I don't see how Chinese companies can match those expectations. If you start to follow that thought a little further down the road, you start to imagine a world divided between those who pursue democratic values and those who don't, between those we trust and those we don't. Something like a new Cold War. And nobody says that that's what they want. But we may end up looking back on this decision about Huawei as a turning point.